PowerPoint is the most loved tool by educators. It is robust yet fun to work with. After seeing all your enthusiasm and comments, I decided to make one more session just for you. Hey, my name is Bhavani Kola. Welcome back to my channel. In today's session, you will be learning how to create a quick and fun interactive PowerPoint presentation just for your students, something like this on the screen, where the students click on the answer. If the answer is right, voila, they celebrate. If not, the answer comes right back to its position. So without a further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into it. It's so much fun yet easy to create. I cannot wait to share this with you. So here I am on a blank PowerPoint presentation. The first thing I would like to do is to change my background. To do that, I'm going to right click format background and here you can pick a picture or pattern, but I'm going to pick a gradient here. And as you can see, PowerPoint automatically picked it for me. But if you want to change the gradient color, simply click on this gradient stops and change the one that you like. So I'm going to click on the gradient stop, click on the color and I'm going to pick. Now that's too dark for me. I'm going to pick a light blue. There you go. That's perfect. Once this is done, I'm going to go ahead and close this. And now I'm going to use illustrations. And this is again, just for demonstration purposes. What you want to create with this is just left to your imagination. I'm going to click on insert. I'm going to click on icons. And here I'm going to click on illustrations. Did you know PowerPoint had illustration option as well? Once I click on that, I'm going to scroll down to something that I like. I think I like this little cat here. I'm going to click insert. And as you can see, PowerPoint is suggesting me different design ideas, but I do not want to take that. So I'm just going to close that. Once this is done, I'm going to right click to see what options I have with this particular cat. I want to fill this with, oh, I like that blue. I'm going to fill that with the blue and I want to outline this also with that blue. There you go. Now I have a cat. You know what? I changed my mind. I want to outline this with red. There I have it. Once that's done, I'm going to minimize it to the size that I want. And now I want to simply copy it four times. So control, drag, control, drag, control, drag, control, and drag. Once this is done, control A to select everything, click on arrange. And I want to align this to the bottom and that's good enough for me. So now I have five cats. I want to go ahead and type in a question that says click on the right option or click on how many cats are here, something like that. So I went ahead and typed in how many cats do you see? Click on the right answer. So my next step is to create those answer options. To do that, I'm going to click on insert shapes. I'm going to click on this rectangular box and I'm going to create one box. That's good. I'm going to click on shape effects. And I'm going to use my presets to pick the preset that I want. I think I like this. I'm going to double click on the box so I can enter a number. I'm going to enter three. This font is too small. I'm going to go ahead, highlight it, click on the home tab and increase the font. That's good enough for me. Now, all I want to do is copy this three times. So again, click control, drag once drag twice, drag three times, and I'm going to drag one all the way up here. You're going to see why in a minute. So I'm going to drag this just a little bit here, select everything, and I am going to go ahead and distribute horizontally. There you go. Perfect. Now I want to change the options and the colors as well. So this is going to be three. This is going to be four. This is going to be five. And this is going to be six. Why not? I'm going to click on each of the rectangle to change the color. So once I click on it all the way on the right hand side, you have an option to fill the shape. I'm going to fill one with, let's say something not too bright. And that's good enough. And let's say, which color do I pick? That's good enough. And one last color to pick. There you go. And this little three is going to be a question mark. You're going to see why in a minute. 
Now, once this is done, I have the cats, I have my answer options and I have a question mark. And I also told my students, how many cats do you see? Simply click on the right answer. Once this is done, now I want to create the magic or the animation. To do that, I'm going to click on animation tab. I'm going to click on the first rectangle. And here, when my students click on number three, I want the three to go all the way to the question mark. And if it's a right answer, it stays there. If it's a wrong answer, it bounces right back. So let me show you how it's done. Again, clicking on three, animation pane. I'm going to add animation. And here, you will be adding a motion path. I'm going to click on motion path, let it run so that I have that little red dot. And once I have the red dot, I'm going to click on the dot drag it all the way to the purple question mark and let go. Now let's see what happened. Click on animation pane and play the animation. And as you can see, my three is going all the way to the question mark, but my three is underneath the question mark. To do that, I'm simply going to click on the purple question mark, right click and send it. Oops, what happened? Okay, right click and send it to the back. Now let's go ahead and play it. There you go. Perfect. But now because it's a wrong answer, I do not want it to stay. I want it to bounce back to its position. To do that, I'm going to click on this animation, scroll all the way to the right until I find this little arrow, click on effect options. And here you have an option to auto reverse. So I'm going to check auto reverse and click OK. There you go. It's the wrong answer. So it bounces right back. Now let's go ahead and do that with number four, five and six. So let's click on four, add animation, motion path. Let it run really quick until you find the little red dot. Click on the red dot, drag it all the way to the question mark. Let go. Click on the arrow, effect options, check auto reverse and click OK. Perfect. Let's do that with number six as well. All right, now we have a different option for number five. So because number five is the right answer, when number five goes to the question mark, it's supposed to stay there. And I'm supposed to have something that says good job or right answer. So my students know that's the right answer. To do that, first, let's go ahead and create the animation. I'm going to click on number five here. Again, add animation, motion path. Let it run really quick so I can get that little red dot. Once that's done, I'm going to click on the dot, drag it all the way to the question mark and let it go. Now let's go ahead and see what happens. So I'm going to click on my slideshow. And when I click on three, three is moving. Now let's go ahead and click on six. The four is moving. When I click on six again, the six is moving. But when I click on three, the five is moving. So that means PowerPoint is just playing this animations the way I have an animation pane. So I'm going to click escape, but I want to make sure PowerPoint knows that the three needs to move only when I click on it. The four needs to move only when I click on it. To do that, we need to add triggers to these animations. To do that, first, I'm going to click on my home tab. Click on select. Click on selection pane. And here, I'm going to click on number three first. And as you can see, number three is rectangle 10. So I'm going to double click and simply make it to three. So I know that's my rectangle three. Click on four and simply change it to four, five, double click, change it to five. Oops, that's four. Six, double click, change it to six. And that should be done. Once this is done, let's close this. Let's click on animation pane. Animation pane here again. And now let's go ahead and add triggers. So I'm going to click on three. Remember, trigger is telling that when I click, only when I click on number three, the number three animation has to play. So I'm going to click on number three here and go all the way up to the right where I see trigger. Click on the trigger. Click on on click of. So I'm telling you when I click on number three, I want the animation to play. So I'm going to click on four trigger on click of number four, five trigger on click on number five, six 
trigger on click on number six now you see why i had those triggers now let's go ahead and see if it works slideshow so again i'm gonna click on four there you go the four is working let's click on three the three is working six six is working five five is working but because five is the right answer five stays back but i also want to add some kind of celebration or an emoji or a picture that says good job and that's the right answer so let's go ahead and do that so here i am on my edge browser i use my bitmoji extension and i'm gonna copy this image i'm just gonna right click copy image come back to my powerpoint right click and paste the image but first step, I want to go ahead and create a nice animation for this one. To do that, I'm going to click on the image animation and here I want it to fly in. I don't want it to fly in from the bottom. I'm going to click on my effect options. I want it to fly from top left. Let's see, that's good enough. But again, I don't want it to fly in whenever, only when I click on number five, I want that to fly in. To do that, I'm gonna click on my image. Again, I have to add a trigger. So trigger on click of number five. But here, I want this to fly automatically after the animation of number five. To do that, I'm gonna simply click on this arrow and instead of saying start on click, I'm gonna click start after previous. Now let's go ahead and see the magic. Are you ready? Number three, all right, back in. Number six, wrong answer, back in. Number five, okay, right on. I hope you enjoyed this session as much as I did sharing with you. I hope you learned something new today. If you did, please make sure you like, subscribe, and if you think it's worth sharing, please go ahead and do so. It's summertime and educators are definitely looking for fun stuff to do with their students next year. And I will leave a link to an interactive playlist in the description box below. Do not forget to check out much more fun interactive PowerPoint sessions just for you. And did you know we now have a Facebook page you can connect with me directly on the facebook page and ask me questions or share your thoughts as well and always remember happy teaching and please take care of yourself